Hi friends, welcome to Ofa Studies YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about creating virtual environments in Python. So firstly, what is virtual environment? We need to understand this. So let me explain you this with some example to make sense of it. So if you have watched my Python playlist, you already know that whenever we have a machine, so within the machine, we actually install Python there. Right, so when you will install Python there and let's call this Python like a global Python, right? On the whole system, this Python is available. Now, when you install any libraries, let's assume you are doing a development in Python and you need a library called NumPy, okay? So when you install that NumPy library, it will come and sits on the global Python. That means from that particular point, any time any application you develop this numpy library is available for your python applications on your machine because at a machine level whatever the python we have we have installed library there it has some downsides assume that you are working on a two applications so let's assume you are working on a application one and also application two now application one may need a library of version one and application 2 may need a library of version 2. In that scenarios, same library with two versions you needed for two different application. This will end up with creating conflicts in the versions and dependencies. To address this situation, there is a beautiful concept called creating virtual environments in Python. So let's address this scenario with virtual environments. So assume that you are working on an application one and also you are working on an application two and you have a single system because you are working on a same machine for both the applications now as you know when you have a machine you when you install python in it it will install at a global level that means the whole system will have a python there but application one need a uh, some library, uh, let's assume like ABCD li library version 1. Application 2 need ABCD library version 2. So how to install these two versions and maintain on my system so that I can work with the application 1 also, application 2 also. So what I can do in this situation is I can create something called virtual environment, VENV, -E virtual environment. So maybe virtual environment one and also I will create something called virtual environment two. So what is this virtual environment is imagine like it's a sandbox or it's a small machine inside a machine. So this virtual network environment also sorry this virtual environment also will contain Python in it. Even in this virtual environment also you will have a Python. Now not only Python the libraries also you can install within that virtual environment. So library version one of ABCD, I can install here also. And maybe here library ABCD version two, I can install there. So that means single mission is getting splitted into multiple missions, a separate environments. And in that mission, I am having a Python separately and I am having the library also. So this is called a virtual environment. So you are creating your own environment for your application. So in this example, app one uses virtual environment one, app two uses virtual environment two. So we should not technically call them as a separate machines. It's a virtual environments. Okay. So for simplicity, I have used that word as a separate machine, but it's not a separate machine within a machine, a folder which acts as a separate environment for you, for your own application. Okay. So now with this idea, let's go back to our presentation. So virtual environment is nothing but like a sandbox for your Python project. This will allows you to install packages in isolation so that it will not interfere with other projects uh, libraries. Okay. And how to create this virtual environment? We can use this VENV module and we can give a name for that particular environment. So Python hyphen M means module VENV 
my env is my name of the virtual environment so what will happen when you use this it will create a folder with the name what you used inside that folder you will have a python also that will give you a practical sense that it's a different environment altogether so let me show you that an example so i am going to my visual studio code file okay let me go to this explore let's open some new folder maybe on my desktop i will create a new folder maybe python demo so that is a folder name and let's go uh, let's select that folder right now so let me hit this trust uh, so my folder is open but this folder has no files right now to practically show you that let me open a file explorer desktop python demo see right now empty there is nothing so now what i am going to do so maybe i will try to add one sample python file here maybe hello world dot py a sample python file and i will have a simple code maybe hello world okay so that's it so let me save this to run this let me open terminal here new terminal and uh, to run this i have to use a python keyword then obviously hello world dot py so let's run that as you can see it it printed hello world well and good so now what i am going to do so i want to create a virtual environment and i want to install the package only for in, inside that environment so to create a virtual environment as i said i need to use python space hyphen m that means module which is a short uh, sh short option hyphen m then v env that is a package name then i want to name it maybe my env that is the environment name so the moment i run this code you should observe here it will create a folder with the same name so let me hit enter and let's wait for the execution to complete here uh, and if you can closely monitor i got a folder now my env so let's try to examine that folder from our folder explorer so when i go there see i got that my env folder and when i go inside i have a couple of folders when i go inside scripts i have the python so that means i have python inside that environment separately okay and also i have python in my local also that means the whole machine level so i am opening a command prompt and uh, here i can basically type python version or something to make you sense python hyphen v to okay so sorry let me execute a different command now let me enter let me cls clear so python space hyphen hyphen version so when i use two hyphens it is called long option which will be having a descriptive name for the flag so this is python 3.11.9 that is my whole machine level python but i have python now within this virtual environment also but to to test to or to work with that particular environment you need to enter into that environment or you need to activate that environment so how to do that so to activate it right what you have to go you have to go inside this my environment inside this scripts and then you have to execute this active powershell code so what i will be doing it here is my env inside that scripts inside that active so when i execute this command it is go it will go and activate my particular environment but to activate it it is giving this unauthorized error to overcome that we need to execute this command set execution policy so let me run this so let me paste this here when i run this it will set the execution policy to run this that will indirectly help us to activate the environment which we are we which we have just now created so let me hit enter now if you closely observe i am able to see this particular uh, symbol before my command prompt cursor this tells me that right now my virtual environment is active and i am inside the virtual environment so let me use uh, cls command here to clear it so now what i wanted to do is let me use this pip space list command this will list down what packages or libraries right now in that environment so let's see so it has two one is pip another one is setup tools let's see what packages or libraries we have in the local 
python are in the python which is at a global level in my machine so for that i am going to the command prompt i am using pip list here let's see what uh, libraries installed in my global python which is in my system so i have only pip which is 25.1.1 version but here i have a pip version of 24 this indirectly tells us that we have a two pythons running right now one python is at a global level which is from the command prompt and another python is here which is inside this my environment box a sandbox which works only for this application so now let's try to install uh, maybe numpy assume numpy is a library which needed for this project to work so let's install that package and then let's again rerun this list command to see whether the installation happens inside this virtual environment or it is in the global python let's see that so our execution completed so let me hit cls to clear it now i will once again run pip list command now i should have the numpy here let's examine whether the numpy got installed in the local global python or not it should not right because we are running inside that sandbox so let's rerun pip space list and see i don't have a numpy i still has only pi uh, sorry pip right so that means my virtual environment is running in an isolated way whatever i am installing it is happening there only so now whatever the libraries i needed for this project i will very well freely install there and i will execute my my python files within that environment so that way my app development works only in that sandbox it will not work on the global python level assume that you did all these things maybe you have installed hundreds of libraries but when you wrap this whole project and when you want to give it to somebody else even they have to create the virtual environment for them so they need to simply copy paste this my environment folder will that work the answer is no what they have to do is what you have to do it is always whatever the libraries you have installed in your virtual environment try to try to uh, write them into the requirements.txt file and give the txt file to the other person who wants to set up in their system and ask them to execute that requirement.txt file using pip install command that way in their environment also all the required libraries will get installed so how to write in which format i have to write that requirements.txt file so firstly to do that so let's run this pip freeze command the moment you run it it will give all the libraries what you have installed in this format library name equals to equals to version name so this information we have to write it into the requirements.txt file so for that we have to use this command let me copy this and uh, let me clear this and then let me paste it python module pip install r means requirement file and whatever the text file name you want to give give it the moment i execute it it will create a requirement.txt file here inside that file it will list down all the libraries what you have installed in your virtual environment so let me run this now and let's wait for this to create a file there okay it seems there is some issue uh, could not open the requirements file oh sorry i think i did wrong so i have to do this pip freeze so the, the command what i executed is to read the requirement.txt file and install them so this is the step two this is the step which other engineer has to do it in their system but before that i have to create the requirement.txt file from my machine because that's where i have installed multiple libraries right so pip freeze then that greater than symbol and i wanted to write all the packages into requirements.txt file so let's execute that and you can see requirements.txt file got created and when you see all the libraries whatever i have it in my virtual environment got written there so now once that is done now i can give this requirement.txt file to somebody else and they can execute uh, this command to take that requirement.txt file and install the relevant libraries in their virtual environment so far it is good before trying that what i said uh, how to deactivate this environment how to come out of this virtual environment so for that we have to use something called deactivate command the moment you execute it you are out of virtual environment that is the reason now you don't see that my environment related uh, label what you see here right so that means you are out of your virtual environment so let's create another virtual environment now assume that a second engineer is working 
for him he has to install all the libraries from the requirement.txt file so let's create a new environment so to create a new environment as i said pip uh, hyphen m that means module virtual environment my environment 2 let's give a name like my environment 2 so let's create another environment and you can see it created another folder now i want to activate that particular environment to activate that i have to go inside that mv2 scripts activate is the powershell which i want to run so what i will do my env2 then inside that scripts okay inside that scripts then inside that activate so if i run that it will activate my environment 2 which i just now created imagine i am a second engineer now now i wanted to install all the packages from the requirements.txt before installing let's see what packages we have right now using pip list command right now i don't have that numpy i should see there is no numpy so now what i will be doing it i will be executing let me run this cls command to clear it now i will be executing that pip uh, python pip install command you see python module pip install requirement file requirement.txt if i run that it will read the requirement.txt file and it will install those libraries so let me hit enter to run this and uh, you see it is installing the numpy package let's wait for the installations to complete here great installation completed now i can execute the pip list command to see whether the numpy got installed in the environment 2 or not so this is the easiest way whenever two engineers are working one engineer has already did lot of work and he created a virtual environment and installed a lot of libraries there so the easiest way is take everything into requirement.txt file using pip freeze command pass on that requirement file to the other engineer they can simply execute this pip install command on top of the requirement file to install those libraries into their environment also and they can resume the development from there so that's it so let me go back to our presentation uh, to see if anything we have missed to cover up from there so if i go so how to activate the uh, environment as i said go to the scripts and then go to the act2 that's where you can in activate your environment and then to terminate the environment uh, uh, so once you activated the environment you need to you can install the packages inside of them and to do activate the environment you need to use the deactivate so if you see closely observe here my environment scripts is the path that's where the act2 powershell file is available to activate your environment this is applicable for the windows let's assume if you are working on a mac os or a linux then inside the environment you will be finding something called a bin folder inside that you will be having that act2 powershell that's what you have to run to activate your environment in the linux or mac os so that's it thank you for watching this video i think now you got a sense how we can create a python virtual environment and how it is helpful to create that sandbox environment to not disturb the global python what you have in your system thank you for watching if you like this video consider giving a thumbs up and subscribe to the my uh, wafa studies youtube channel thank you have a nice day